Hi guys and welcome in this new video. The goal of this video is to give you a very quick overview about the machine learning models you can use for trading and especially when you need to use which one. Here we'll just do a quick overview, but if you want to learn more about quantitative trading, create your own trading bot thanks to a 7 day of a 7 support, e-learning videos and real life monthly project, just take a look of the AlphaCon program into the description and you will have an amazing discount thanks to the Black Friday. First of all, here we'll focus on the supervised machine learning models. The two different type of models you can have are the regression and the classification. And generally, all the models I will talk about in this video have the two version, the two option, regression, for a continuous value from zero to 100, and you can have all the values into this interval, for example, 2.17 or 99.50, etc. okay? Or a classification. You need to classify if your observation is into the first class, the second class, the third class, etc. From my experience, the classification works a bit better than the regression. But for some machine learning models, you need absolutely to use a regression. Or you can use also a mix between both, but we'll talk deeper about that in one moment. The second thing you need to understand is that the majority of the relation between the financial data are non-linear. It means that linear regression, linear SVM, and so on are not really powerful. They can detect some patterns, which is quite obvious, okay? You have also some linear relationship, but it will not detect all the relation. But as they will not be able to detect the nonlinear relation, you will not have all the possible information. And as a linear model, you have, for example, the linear regression, the linear as there, and so on. On the other side, you have the nonlinear models. When the most used are the SVM and the random forest. The SVM is a geometrical algorithm, so be careful, you need absolutely to standardize the data before using it. Then, second very important thing is that the SVM has a big limitation. A huge advantage of the SVM is that it can be used on a very, very small data set. But on the other end, when you are using too much data, for example, above 50,000, 100,000, you will have a big problem because the computation time will increase exponentially and so it will be very difficult to train your model. So if you have too much data, it's better to use, for example, a random forest that will use an iteration process and so it will not be impacted too much by the number of data. Moreover, if you have a data set with a lot of dummy variables, so zero or one, for example, you can use a random forest because thanks to this iteration process that will create condition, okay, because they will create some trees, using dummy variables will not impact negatively the training of a random forest. So that's a very interesting point. Before going deeper and talking about combining different models, I just want to do a quick highlight about the deep learning models, okay? When I talk about deep learnings, I talk about recurrent neural network, deep neural network, convolutional neural network, so all the most famous neural networks, okay? They are very powerful, really, if you know how to use it. But generally, you will just come from a Medium article that use RNN and you will use it. And that's really not the best thing to do. The best thing to do is to know why you need to use it. And it's not very easy to use it, especially in trading, because we don't have a lot of data. You need at least, really, at the really least, to have 100,000, 200,000 data. And that's really the minimum for the basic neural networks. But the better is to have 1 million more, for example. When you begin to have this number of data, you can begin to use deep learning. But generally, we don't have enough data to use it properly and to benefit from its power. So for now, we have done a small guided tour about the strengths, the weaknesses of all the different algorithms. Let me just put to the screen a recap about what we know now. But there is something we didn't talk about or we talked just a little bit. A random forest, for example, it's an aggregation of different trees. So what we can do is to combine not only trees, 
but to combine different models. And it will give us a huge advantage because if you use, for example, linear regression that will capture linear relationships into the data and you have some medium result, good result, okay, not amazing, but quite good. If you use a nonlinear models, for example, a SVM, and you use also a random forest and you have medium results, good results for each models, but not amazing results. What you can do is combine the predictions of this model in order to increase your accuracy. And it works pretty well if the underlying models are at least medium, okay? It means if you are able to be at break even, let's say, in terms of profit trading, when you base your trading strategy on one machine learning model, you can slowly begin to use it into your model aggregation. And here we have only three models, but the goal can be to have, I don't know, five, 10 models. It will really increase the accuracy. So it means that you can use the same target, for example, knowing if the next candle will be green or red. Let's take a very basic example, but it's not mandatory to use the same features. So maybe you can use features one, two, three for the linear regression, four, five, six, for the SVR, for example, to focus on something else. And you can continue like that. Use a random forest that you will use one, two, three, four, five, six. And so at the end, you will have several models that work on the same purpose. Even if you are using, for example, two linear models, okay? If one is based on features one, two, three, and the target and the over is based on features, I don't know, 11, 12, 13, and the same target, you can combine these two predictions in order to increase your accuracy. And the goal is to have as much estimator as you can have. And I repeat, the goal is not to have a huge number of estimator, but a quite good number of estimator, which are at least medium. And another thing you can do on the same mind, for now, when you combine some metrics, for example, you do an average, or you take, if you are into a classification, a voting method, which means that you will take the majority of answer, for example, if you have 10 models and eight say that you need to go into a buy position, you will go into a buy position, for example. Other thing that you can do is create a machine learning models that will use only the prediction. They will have the target, the real target they need to achieve, and the features will be the prediction of the other models. That another way to do. You really have a lot of different ways to use machine learning to create training strategies. That was just a small overview. If you want a deeper guided tool about how to use machine learning in order to create trading strategies, you can take a look to the AlphaCon program. And if you have any question about this video, any suggestion, remark, feel free to drop it into the comment area and I will gladly answer you. And see you soon in the next video.